Here's what else we tell students. Uh, comparison's a killer. Hey, how about this? Comparison will kill you. Right? Let me read you, um, let me read you a scripture really quick. Uh, Matthew 13, this is, you can read it up there with me, just follow along. When Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. He came to his hometown and began teaching them in the synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these uh, miraculous powers? Is it not the carpenter's son? Is it not his mother called Mary and his brothers James and Joseph, Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things, and they took offense to him. And they took offense to him. Here's another great scripture. For who regards you as superior? What do you have that you do not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? I'll explain that to you really quick. Comparison leads to two different places. We read um, in Matthew, people looked at Jesus, looked at him, compared themselves to him. Isn't this that kid, that carpenter's kid, right? He's not any different. How did he get all this stuff? And they looked at him and took offense to him. Comparison leads to offense or it leads to this place. And this is Paul talking to the church. For who regards you as superior? Basically he's saying, listen, why do you think you're so special? What do you have that God didn't give you? And if he did give it to you, why do you act like you got it for yourself? Basically what that scripture means. Comparison leads to two places. It's always been said that if you compare yourself to others, you lose, which is mostly a true statement, right? When you lose, it leads to offense in your heart. Offense in your heart. I remember um, sitting at a, at a table in first year school of ministry when I was there. And uh, J- you guys know Jason Ballatin, Chris's boy? Yes? No? Anyway. Anyway, okay. So Chris's son, we worked together, and um, he's a great friend of mine. And uh, I was in school, of, you know, I was in first year school of ministry for, for about a year, and um, they, gave, they gave a promotion to somebody and they gave it to Jason and I was sitting at the table and legitimately for like, you're gonna laugh at me, but honestly for probably two seconds, maybe two seconds, I was so angry and offense gripped my heart for about two seconds. And you're like, oh, it's just two seconds. Listen, when, that, when you're not used to having that, two seconds is, is a bit of a lifetime for that to happen. And it gripped my heart. And I, I changed it immediately and I immediately went to Jay and said, hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I love you and anything, lead me. I'm here to be led by you. And, um, and there's a whole longer story to that. But here's what happened. I compared myself to Jay. I compared myself to him because I knew, I worked with him. I knew, I, I, you know, my wife grew up with him. I knew who he was. We spent time together. We hung out a bit together. And in comparing myself to him, I took offense at his growth, right? Just like these people did to Jesus, took offense at who they thought he was, not who Jesus was at the time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you guys, so, so if you compare, it leads to offense. Here's the other thing it leads to. It leads to arrogance, which is worse. Which is worse. Because arrogance leads to pride. And, and the Bible's really clear that God actually resists the what? The proud. You don't want that. FYI, you do not want that. Right? Listen, God can work with a lot of things, but God actually resists the proud. Why do you think of yourself as superior? What do you have that you didn't receive from God? And if you did receive it from God, why do you talk like you didn't? Like you did it all for yourself? I asked my boy if I could share this story. He said yes. We had this amazing, I, I don't know how other parents talk to their kids. I talk to my kids pretty much how I'm talking to you. So it's kind of how that works. Um, we were walking down the hallway. Uh, maybe this was a few years ago. We were walking down the hallway here. And uh, I think Judah was maybe in third grade at the time. 
third grade, maybe, maybe this year, fourth grade, beginning of the year. And uh, some little boy looks at Judah, younger, and says, hey, Judah, hey. And my son, whom I love, right? I love you. Deep love. My son gives him one of these and keeps walking. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Bless me. So I asked my boy, I said, come here. Not embarrassing him, right? Not embarrassing him now, but not embarrassing him then. I said, come here. So we step in that little hallway right there. I said, Judah, did you see that boy say hi to you? I said, yeah. Did you say hi back? Yeah. I said, did you say hello back? Yeah. How did you say hi? No, no. Negative. Nay, nay. That is not what we do. Did you say anything? He actually acknowledged you and said, hello, Judah. Did you acknowledge him? No. Why not? I don't know. Look. So here's the, here's the conversation we had, right? Pretty much word for word. I said, all right, look, kid. This, this little head nod thing, I used to do that. Don't do that. First of all, don't do that. That's a little, I'm cool. Remember that thing? I'm cool. What's up? I'm cool. Don't, no, don't do that. Because that, I'm not cool with that. So let me tell you how this works. I know you're, I know you're in, I think I said, I know you're in fourth grade, fourth grade. And I know you think you're so cool. I get it. I am happy to have the cool kid in my family. I'm happy to do that, right? Your mom buys you all these nice clothes. It's awesome. You're cool. But let me just tell you, I hold the key to your coolness. This is how this works, right? Huh? That's what I said, right? You are only cool because of me. It's the only reason. And I got down, I'm like, listen, kids are fickle, right? When you come to school in a trash bag, they're going to think you're not cool. It's not going to work. So look, we're going to acknowledge people when they say hi to you. And we're going we're gonna to love people. And we're going to take the gift that God gave you, right? Which is, yeah, I get it. People like you. And we're actually going to use it for good instead of for your own personal, I think I'm cool. Right? Can we do that? He's like, yep, that will work. No trash bag. That will work. <laughs> right? He still comes to school in cool clothes. He's, you know, he does all that stuff. Um, listen, here's the, it, and, and Jude, listen, my, my son is great. He's a great. He's a great kid. He's awesome. But here's what happens. It's, it's sometimes worse when you compare yourself to somebody else and you win because you get a little arrogant in your heart. And then you start giving the head nods to everybody else. And this is, uh, if I can be really honest with you, and this is what we communicate to students all the time, this is the tension at Bethel sometimes because we have it so good in this place. It is the most amazing place. I wouldn't want to be any other place. God shows up here. It's awesome. And if we're not careful, we get the I'm cooler than you. And sometimes we give head nods to other people out there when we should be saying hello and loving them in a way that acknowledges who they are because God created them to be special and to be amazing, right? And we have, yeah, you can, you can do that. We have, we have an opportunity. Honestly, we have an opportunity simply because we get to be a part of this amazing community of believers to bless people outside of this house. And I want to make sure that we take that opportunity to, to love people. Is that okay? Okay.